This video will show you how to set up and use your Quest 3, how to use the controllers, as well as buying games and finding your way around the menu with lots of tips along the way. Inside the box you get the two redesigned Quest 3 touch controllers and the headset itself and your accessory box with mains charger and USB-C to USB-C cable and a quick start guide. There's a QR code on the box so you can download the app and quickly set up your headset and you'll need a Meta account which you can set up once you've downloaded the app. Don't get carried away with the setup of your headset just yet though because you'll need to charge it. So plug the USB-C cable into the headset here and it takes around two hours to charge. So let's take a quick look around the headset before putting it on. You have the IPD lens spacing wheel here and this allows you to adjust the lenses to match the distance between your eyes. And to do this accurately and to find out your exact IPD, you can use the Eye Measure app. The Eye Measure app will give you a distance in millimeters and then you move the wheel on the headset and you'll see the numbers appear inside the headset. If you're near the minimum or the maximum, you might have to dig your nail into the wheel to make it turn as it gets a bit slippery and tricky to move at either end. Volume level can be adjusted here and this adjusts the level of the volume that comes from the speakers that are on the inside of the arms either side. You have an audio jack if you want to use headphones and on the other side you have the USB-C charge socket. The power button is here, press and hold the power button for one second to turn it on. And at any time while you're using the headset you can quick press the on button to put it into standby mode which saves you battery. You can buy a charging dock for the Quest 3 and this is the three pin connector that the charging dock uses. On the inside of the facial interface either side there's a depth adjustment and this changes how close the lenses are to the eyes. And if you wear glasses this means you can create enough room to wear your glasses inside the headset. So unless you wear glasses then set this distance as close to your eyes as possible. The depth adjuster though inside the facial interface does feel a little cheap and it's not very good design, it's actually quite awkward to adjust. But to adjust it, don't just squeeze really hard because then it won't move at all. You basically push your thumb one way and then your finger the other way, like this, otherwise you just squeeze the plastic together. And remember you have to adjust it evenly on both sides. To put the headset on, loosen off the strap and then place the lenses over your eyes first and then bring the strap over your head. If you do it the other way around and you put the strap on the back of your head first, then you'll tend to drag the lenses across your hair, which means you'll get loads of grease and muck all over your lenses. Adjust the back of the headset so that it's firm and secure but not so tight that you get a headache. Now hold the headset securely onto your face and then adjust the top strap to keep it in place. And then you can fine tune the headset by adjusting the angle of the headset on the arms. And once it's all adjusted you should now be able to take the headset off and then put it back on again with no further adjustment. The controllers come with batteries installed so simply pull the tabs out to use them. And these will last for weeks before you need to replace them but when you do need to you do that simply by pressing this button here which releases the battery cover and then replace it with an AA battery. And make sure you do use these hand straps because you will drop these at some point or put them down on a virtual table like I did several times with the Quest 2. Turn the controllers on by pressing and holding the Meta logo on the right controller for two seconds and the button with the three lines on on the left controller. The menu button on the left controller can be used in games to bring up additional game menus or to change the viewing angle for example. When you turn on the headset you'll be guided through a simple to follow setup process and you'll be using the headset and the app for the setup process so make sure that the app is up to date and your Wi-Fi is turned on. The headset may temporarily turn off and on during this setup process while it gets a firmware update so this is nothing to worry about. And the first time you use the app you'll need to input a passcode in the headset but you'll be able to see your phone without taking the headset off because of the pass-through camera on the front. Once you've been walked through this setup you'll straight away be able to see your real room environment around you and this is using what's called the color pass-through mode and this is the mode that you use for mixed reality games but also for being able to easily see and talk to people in the room or to keep yourself safe and recenter yourself in your play space and you can enter pass-through mode at any time simply by double tapping on the side of your headset and then to go back into your virtual environment just double tap again. The Quest 3 automatically scans your room to set up your guardian boundary which is like a safety net for your play space and it scans your room using the new depth sensor on the Quest 3 simply by looking around your room. 
you can select continue here and then make adjustments to your boundary by pressing and holding the trigger and pointing to the floor to extend or decrease the line. If you're new to VR though, I would highly recommend that you manually set your Guardian boundary. The sound effects are really cool and it's just a really fun part of the setup process. So instead of pressing continue here, you press choose your own boundary and for a full room scan, select room scale and then follow the instructions. And if you're seated, you can select stationary. To bring up the main menu screen, you press the meta button on the right controller. And you can do this anytime during a game as well to quit the game and come back to the main menu. To select any icon on the menu, you simply point to it with the controller and then press the front or the grip trigger on the inside of the controller to select. If you move near the edge of the menu, it will bring up this white ghost surround. And if you click and hold this, with the trigger, you can move the menu around and bring it closer or move it further away by moving your hand in and out. And to scroll through your games, you can press and hold the trigger and then move the controller up or down, or you can use the joystick. And you can also push on top of the joystick and this also acts as a button. So you can select things this way as well. If you have previously purchased games on the Quest 2, then at this stage, you'll be prompted to install some of them. But to choose from your complete range of games that you've previously installed, you need to select the multi-square icon here and click install on whichever game you want to download. And this is where you'll come to see any games and apps that you've installed. If you're completely new to VR, then the first two games that you must play are First Steps and First Encounters. This is a good place to talk about your virtual home environment, which is this place here that we've been looking at. And First Encounters can be accessed by selecting the rocket over here. The other widget in this space is your avatar mirror. And as you point at it, this white circle appears. And if you press the trigger, you will teleport in front of the mirror. And here on this menu, you can make adjustments to your avatar. But now let's get back to the main menu screen. The main menu structure here is vast, but I will show you the shortcut icons as well as one item from the main settings menu. The quick settings on the left, this is where you can check your headset and controller's battery status. You can mute your microphone and also you can select or disable your Wi-Fi. You can also select switch view here to give you a huge screen display. The explore icons takes you here where you'll be able to explore all that's possible with the Quest 3. From YouTube, VR, Netflix, sporting events, fitness, games, productivity and more. The store icon is where you can purchase games and apps. And the people icon is where you can use Messenger and connect with friends and find social apps where you can meet up with others. The camera icon, this allows you to cast your gameplay to a TV so others can watch it, or you can take a photo or video. And this is also where all of your photos and videos that you've recorded are stored. The next icon is usually the game you're currently playing. The cog icon is the settings menu. And in here, I want you to look at the personalization settings as this is where you can change the look of your virtual home environment. So when you double tap on the side of your headset, you're taken to your virtual home environment. And in this menu, you can change how this virtual environment looks. And there are loads to choose from. To turn your headset off, press and hold the off button for two seconds and then select power down. In terms of care for your headset, use a soft microfiber cloth to clean the lenses and avoid using any chemicals. And also when not in use, never put your headset in direct sunlight, say on a windowsill. Always try and keep the lenses covered and if you haven't got a proper cover, then just use a pair of socks. But the tips in this video only scratch the surface and you'll want to watch this video next where I'll show you some more essential tips to get the most out of your Quest 3. My name's Rich, thanks for watching and I'll see you over there.